Welcome to Great Loop Radio, brought to you by America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. We're dedicated to sharing Great Loop information and inspiration with those actively cruising, planning for, or dreaming about a Great Loop adventure. This is Kim Russo. I'm the director of AGLCA. Today, I'm very happy to have with us Jared Olafson. He is a port director with the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, and he's going to fill us in today on some of the new things coming to the Rome app. So we'll start with a little bit of the basics of Rome that's been in place for a bit, and then move on to some of the new features that are really going to be helpful for our non-U.S. members, particularly uh, the Canadian citizens that we know are members of the U.S. Sorry, let me say that again particularly our Canadian citizens who are members of AGLCA who would love to be able to come back to the U.S. soon. So that's kind of the focus of the discussion is what's new with Rome. Um, But before I officially get started, I do want to take a moment to recognize and thank our Admiral sponsors who support AGLCA at the highest level. They are Curtis Stokes & Associates, Passage Maker Trawler Fest, Skipper Bob Publications, and Waterway Guide Media. As always, we encourage our listeners to support these businesses that support the Great Loop. And now I'd like to officially welcome Port Director Jared Olafson from U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Uh, may I call you Jared? Absolutely, and thank you for the invite. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. I was glad that we were able to have you join us today because the Rome app has been a big improvement um, just in the logistics and the ease of U.S. citizens returning to the country, but there's some great things coming up for that really resolve some problems that our Canadian members have told us about for quite some time. But to kick things off, just tell us a little bit more about yourself and your position with the Customs and Border Protection Agency. Well, I'm a port director here in Warrell, Minnesota. Um, We're on Lake of the Woods. We're not, we're close to the Great Lakes, but not close enough I can get in my boat and get there. But we do have a very big body of water in Lake of the Woods, so we're, we're used to boating traffic. We're boaters ourselves, so I've been here for 20 years, and the water is the best place to be, especially in the summer. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we were kind of connected by uh, Chris White, who has spoken at some of our events before about the Rome app and some other technology happenings at Customs and Border Protection. Um, So if some of you are wondering how how Jared came to be the expert on this when he's probably not the person that loopers are gonna see as they're coming back into the country, um, that is how, but we were asking some questions about some of these new features um, and Jared is the person who can help us with that. So let's just start with the basics though. Um, The Rome app was launched a few years ago. Uh, Tell Mm -hmm. us why um, CBP decided to create this app and what it was initially launched to do. It was initially launched, it was, it was created and launched to modernize small vessel arrival reporting. Um, as you know, we had the ORS program, which on the northern border, there was a few select locations you could dock, get on that analog telephone of, that we pr- would provide, have a grainy video of us talking to you on the other end, and away you would go. Um, we also had SVRS, the small vessel reporting system, which was dealing more with the coastal waterways. And we felt it was time to kind of bring that all into the modernization getter up to the 20th century, at least, um, with all of the technology, get everything kind of consistent with how people interact in normal businesses today. So that's how it came to be. Yeah. And it's really um, a great example of a government project that was done very well uh, because it really has achieved those objectives, made things a lot easier for boaters. Um, one of the sad parts for our loopers actually was... Um, so many people would talk about Officer Kitzmiller checking them in at Drummond Island, Michigan. Um, and he used to be on site there on occasion and would be checking people in. And uh, when Rome launched, uh, he was replaced on Drummond Island with an iPad. <laughs> now, right. he is still with CPP and he is in uh, Sault Ste. Marie and still a great friend to loopers in terms of providing me information when needed, although he doesn't get to see us face to face as much anymore. Um, but with technology comes changes like that. So we wish him the best, of course. But tell us a little bit, uh, for U.S. citizens, let's start there. Coming back into the U.S. aboard their boat, most loopers are going to be coming um, through the Great Lakes and and entering through Lake Huron. But many of them also go to the Bahamas aboard their boat as kind of a side trip on the Great Loop. So, um, you know, tell us a little bit about the procedure now for U.S. citizens to check back into the U.S. versus how it used to be. Okay. Okay. both for U.S. and Canadian citizens, the, the, one of the added benefits of CDP Rome is that all of the data is stored on your own personal device. So you have that data with you 
wherever you're making landfall, wherever you're entering the U.S. at. So I can put my vessel information in there, all the passenger information I have in there. When I make my arrival in Port Huron or I'm heading down the coast, it's a few quick, simple clicks of a button, and all of that data is transmitted now to CBP for us to view and make it our, our decision on. And once that decision is made, that data stays on your local device. So you always have it. You can make multiple trips, multiple entries. Um, a lot of people have multiple boats. You can have multiple vessels on there and everything is available right at the touch of your fingertips. Well, and that's really a time saver because um, a lot of those documentation numbers and, you know, uh, passport information that can all be stored there used to be provided either face-to-face in person or over a phone, which can be challenging to be reciting those numbers. So excellent right. time saver. And of course, you can enter all of that at your leisure when you know that at some point you're going to be coming back across the border. So tell us how it works when you're actually, you know, you're on your boat and you're actually about to cross that international border. What do you do at that point with the app? So once you're about ready to cross the international border and how we have the app set up is that it only works when you're in U.S. waters. So you have to be able to cross that international line. And once you're across that international line, you simply go to your role map. We do offer two, uh, two-part authentication. So it is a secure login through login.gov, which a lot of your users are probably familiar with, with Trusted Travelers. That's kind of the, the GSA and the government's baseline is login.gov. They're then able to start building up that profile. Here's the vessel I'm in. Here are the people that are with me. Here's the master of the vessel. And here's where I'm going to be making landfall. Here's the harbor I'm going to. Once all that's done, they simply hit submit and that data is transferred to us. You then have a little scrolling ticker on your screen that says that we've received it. There's an officer processing it. You've been approved to enter, things like that. So it's all it's all right at the touch of your fingertips. So, and I have not had the opportunity to use this yet because I have not gone to such exotic locales on my boat recently. Um, but when you're checking in, um, you know, what kind of, you, you mentioned the ticker, but I have also heard that the um, customs agent can request a video chat with you to see who's aboard or, or see parts of the boat. Tell me more about that. Absolutely. Similar to how the ORS program worked, some of your boaters are probably familiar with that, where we had our analog video phones. Well, now that same video inspection is going to take place, but it's going to be through smartphone technology, your, your device that you have. So the video clarity is a lot clearer. You're able to see the officer that you're dealing with. We're able to talk and visit with you guys and then make the decision from there. And, and so um, one of the things that I, I can remember um, Chris White saying is, you know, we know that most of these boaters are not people that we're looking for. <laughs> you know, so we try to... Um, make it fairly easy for them to check in. Um, but you can still require them to tie up at a specific location and do a face-to-face meeting and inspection of the boat if you choose. Is that correct? And, and are there circumstances where that happens or is it more random like airport screening where you just might be that lucky number? Absolutely. CBP always has the, retains the ability and the, the, the authority to have somebody dock at the marina and meet a CBP officer for that in-person inspection. It could be for a vast array of things. Um, like you said, you you got the lucky draw and it's your turn for a quick inspection. It could be because you need an additional travel document. Maybe you have some stuff you need to declare and pay taxes or duties on. So it's a vast array of things, but CBP does have that ability to have you meet us for an in-person inspection. Yeah. It's always interesting to me because it, it, it tends to be something that makes loopers nervous. And we get questions from our U.S. citizens all the time about, well, what's going to happen when I cross into Canada? What are they going to want from me? What are they going to ask me for? Um, and it's really a pretty simple process, regardless of which country you're, you're crossing into. And again, you know, it, the objective is not to trip you up. Um, but so certainly I don't want anybody to panic if they happen to be someone who does get requested to tie up and, and you know, wait for a face-to-face inspection because it, it could just be random. Um, so anything else um, that loopers or other boaters that are U.S. citizens should know or consider using the Rome app for, or is it strictly for, for checking in when you're returning? Well, checking in, but we also have what we call the verified traveler status. Um, it doesn't give you trusted traveler program um, status. However, it does help you in the small vessel in the pleasure boating realm. The verified traveler is a combination of the old I-68 program and the SVRS program, where they gave you the local border number. Um, you are able to apply for that verified traveler status, that local border option number through the Rome app. And what that's going to allow you to do is if for some reason there's no cell service, the 
the grid's down, you're having a hard time reporting, and you have to resort to that old, old mentality of using the telephone and hardlining CBP, having that verified traveler status, we're able to get your information a lot quicker and get you expedited and on your way a lot faster than going through the old little rigmarole of I need your passport and all the data associated with that. And it, it definitely speeds up your, your entry if we have any the Rome issues. Well, and, and if there are Rome issues, I'm sure that that process of doing it by phone will get even more delayed um, because everybody's can, you know, so used to already of using Rome. So having that verified traveler status as a backup plan, we're, we're big on having redundancy and backup plans. So that's a, a great process through the Rome app as well. Um, anything else you can recommend to U.S. citizens coming back in to just to make sure that the check-in goes smoothly? Uh, no, but the only thing I can recommend is that I'm, I'm a guy that uses a cell phone quite a bit too. And I, I do make a, what I would call my fat finger mistakes and I misspell something or enter wrong data. Before you hit save on that, just go through, verify that all that data is good. So that way when you do submit it, we're not on the phone or on the video chat trying to correct data and get everything organized. So just do a quick glance over, make sure everything is what it says it's supposed to be and away you go. Excellent. And in the unlikely event for some of us <laughs> that the cell phone battery may be drained, um, I mentioned the iPad on Dry Drummond Island. If for whatever reason, uh, I can't imagine that any of the loopers do not have a mobile device, uh, smartphone capable of this, but there are iPads on certain locations where people can check in as well. So are those, you know, a, a pretty easy alternative should you happen to drop your cell phone in the, in the water that morning and can't use it to absolutely, check in? Absolutely. We do have iPads scattered throughout the northern border um, for the loopers. So if you do not have that cell phone connectivity, all the iPads are connected to Wi-Fi at host marina. So you're able to use those iPads and still utilize Rome. Excellent. Um, so I do want to focus, as I said, on some of the newer features, and the newer features are things that are going to be very helpful to our non-U.S. member, non-U.S. citizen members, particularly our Canadian members, because we do have a large contingent of members that are Canadian. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to take a quick moment. How about before we jump into that, and let's let's take a break so that when we come back, we can roll right through um, some of the current hot topics, so to speak, for our Canadian members, and also how they can use the Rome app to their advantage. So we'll be back in a moment. Good. PropTalk is an Annapolis-based company founded in the summer of 2005 by active Chesapeake Bay boaters. The company produces PropTalk Magazine, a monthly newsprint magazine focused on Chesapeake Bay power boating and the lifestyle surrounding boating on the bay. Every issue of PropTalk is distributed at more than 850 carefully chosen and closely monitored locations throughout the Mid-Atlantic. PropTalk's coverage goes deep rather than wide, and the magazine celebrates the people, places, boats, personalities, and events that make the Chesapeake one of the world's premier boating grounds. Thanks for reading and supporting the Chesapeake Bay's Boating Magazine. We're back on Great Loop Radio. My guest today is Jared Olifson. He is a port director with the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency. And we are talking about the Rome app, which has been in use for U.S. citizens for a few years now to check back into the U.S. Um, as I mentioned in the first segment, uh, Chris White, who has done a lot of the... Uh, I'm not even sure what his title is on this project, but he seems to have done a lot of the visionary work on what it really needed to be able to do. Um, he's a very entertaining speaker for those of you who have joined us at our events uh, where he has been. Um, and I think he described himself as the person who, who needed to communicate with the uh, software coders who, who sometimes speak a different language. So he was the person with the ability to explain to them how it needed to work. Um, and he's done a fabulous job. And some of the issues the Rome app initially created for our Canadian members, I think, are resolved with this new release. And, and those were some issues that I kind of mentioned to Chris. Hey, this Rome thing is great, but this was the unintended consequence. And I'm sure there were others who brought that to him as well. Um, so what happened with that? As I mentioned, um, Ryan Kitzmiller was there at Drummond Island, and he was ish able to issue cruising licenses, which non-U.S. boats, which are Canadian members specifically, need to have for the boat in order to cruise the U.S. Um, that was a document that at that time required an actual physical signature. So when they moved the actual officer from Drummond Island to Sault Ste. Marie, it meant that Canadian members coming in through Drummond Island now had to travel to the Sioux to pick up that cruising license. So that was, you know, some extra time, a little bit out of the way. Um, so that has basically been addressed. Um, 
So tell us a little bit about what happens now for those who need a cruising license. And, and to go back to the beginning, and I know you and I talked about this a little in the pre-interview and you have it in front of you. Let's start by explaining what is a cruising license? Because even those who need one often are not really familiar with it or, or even the fact that they need it. So right. let, let's start there with what it is and who needs one. So basically a cruising license, it allows pleasure boats of certain countries um, to undergo, basically they don't have to go through formal entry and clearance procedures to come into U.S. waters. Um, it's just a quick permit that they can get. As you mentioned, it always was in person before. Um, we've now taken that cruise license and made it electronic. So it's it's going to be a very big benefit for your Canadian members that do the cruising license. And we're very excited to have them start using it and it's rolled out ready. Absolutely. So, and it, it, it means that the procedure for them, um, I, I think Jared is going to be similar to U.S. citizens where when they cross the border, the app will work and they can obtain their cruising license that way. Um, Absolutely. Now, you may or may not know the answer to this, but how far in advance do they need to apply for that? I know um, Officer Kitzmiller usually wanted that a few days so he could prepare the document because it was right. a physical document. Does that, you know, is that still needed or is it kind of an instantaneous thing as you're crossing? No, it is, it is absolutely an instantaneous thing. Um, it is through Rome now. So when you are crossing and we actually, the, the Rome application is laid out as such that you're going to know right off the bat if you qualify or if you need a cruising license. It explains what the cruising license is based on your registration country, based on your, reg your province of registration, all those things. It's going to indicate that, hey, you were, you're eligible for a cruising license and would you like to get one? Um, once you check yes on that, on your initial arrival when you're coming, you will have your cruising license. It's it's you do it right when you come, just like Rome. On top of approving your arrival into the U.S., we're now going to also approve your cruising license. And your cruising license is good for a year. The next year, when you're boating, if that cruising license is still good, you're boating within that year time frame. You won't need to get another one. If that cruising license is expired, the app is going to say, "Hey, your cruising license is due for renewal. Would you like to renew it right now?" You hit the button that yes, you'd like to renew it, and you get your cruising license renewed. Yeah, and, and for any Canadian members that are watching or listening, we do have a webinar specifically for the requirements for our Canadian members to enter the U.S. Um, and to be able to stay for the extended period of time required to do the Great Leap. And, and one of the things covered there pretty well is the, the cruising license and the fact that um, it really applies to the boat, Correct. not the people. It, you know, it's not really an immigration question i guess it's right. more of a, a taxation importation it, yeah it's, it's, it's on the boat and, and even with the cruising li license application if your if your vessel is 300 gross tons or more it will it'll prompt you to upload your cofra which some boats need that cofra it'll upload that it, you will upload a copy of your registration um it's very intuitive very interactive so it, it works with the boater there's not a lot of hard areas or troubled areas so they're able to get that cruising license and continue on the way can you tell us, Jared, what does a boat need to do if they're not eligible for a cruising license? If they're not eligible for a cruising license, a couple different things. Um, any vessels larger than 30 feet do need to have their decal. Um, but again, through CBP Rome, you're able to purchase that user fee decal right within the app. Um, so everything is everything small vessel related is right in CBP Rome for all your users to use. Any Canadians coming down when, when the border opens up here in the northern border, if they want to boat into rural Minnesota, they can use CBP Rome and report their arrival and pay their cruising light or their fee if they need it for their decal and away they go. The Rome app has made this so much simpler because in addition to digitally, electronically, immediately getting the cruising license, one of the challenges that a lot of our Canadian members faced in the past is that there's a requirement um, to kind of check in at each port of call. And right. at the borders um, or, or near the ocean or the Gulf, it seemed from what members were finding that the CBP officers were very well versed at what was supposed to be happening. However, as they traveled the inland rivers and got to smaller towns along the way, it sometimes became challenging and you know finding the right person to check in with because they really wanted to follow the letter and the intent of the law. 
and uh, finding the right person to check in with was somewhat somewhat challenging. Sometimes if they were in the same area for an extended period of time, but moving around, that person would get a little tired of hearing from them and say, you really don't need to call me again. <laughs> um, so it was, it was just a little bit of an extra wrinkle and challenge for people who were really trying to do what they needed to do. Um, so my understanding is that that is being fixed. I don't know if it's part of this release, release but can yes, they now it's... check in along the way with the roadmap? It absolutely is. It is part of this release. Um, they can update their ports of call through the roadmap. You actually, when you log into the roadmap, you don't even have the option for port of call update until you have an active cruising license. Once you have that active cruising license, your app will now give you that, that port of call update functionality. Additionally, for those of you that, that have an active cruising license, those active cruising licenses are good. You can put those in your vessel profiles right now in CBP Rome. So you can start utilizing that ASAP. Excellent. So um, you also mentioned the decal, which I think is the same as the DTOP sticker, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, DTOP sticker, decal. Um, and I think you mentioned that can now be requested through Rome as well. So tell us, you right. know, that used to be something you actually had to request and it was physically mailed to you, sometimes taking an extended period of time. Um, yes. So how does that work now? And it, it's, it still does get mailed to you and it's still sometimes could take an extended period of time um, but we do have a, a link through our cbp Rome app. it's right on the vessel main page where you're able to purchase that decal and once you purchase that decal all we request of you to do until you get the physical decal in hand is to put your receipt number in there that way we know you have that certified and legitimate decal so if that was something you weren't aware of until you crossed in you can still do it and have the receipt number and, and be clear um, yeah. until you actually have the sticker in hand so that's very good to know um, any other insight on future upgrades or enhancements to Rome? Because, you know, so far it seems like the CBP has been very receptive to um, feedback from voters about what else was needed and what could make this even better. Absolutely. We will be transitioning the CBP Rome app into the current CBP One platform um, sometime in the next year. Uh, what CBP One is, is it's the single portal for all CBP applications. So not only will it allow your voters to access their voting applications, but they're going to have a much more a vaster suite of services to include get their most recent I-94, check their crossing records, things like that. So it's it's going to be transitioning and we're looking forward to that. It, it's going to provide that voter with a lot more options. And we'd love to have you back to talk about that when that is uh, released and underway. Um, you know, again, I just want to commend you and the rest of the team who works on the CBP Rome app, uh, because it really is one of the, the best examples I know of the federal government using technology to really improve a situation um, and then going back and making additional releases to that to continue to improve it and perhaps um, make things even better where there were some unintended consequences like Canadians having to go to the Sioux to get their cruising license. So uh, right. thank you and please pass our thanks along to the rest of the team who works on the app because it really is a big improvement and we are appreciative of that. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Uh, again, Jared Olifson, Port Director, Customs and Border Protection. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate you sharing your information today. Sounds good. Thank you. And to our listeners and viewers, thank you for joining us once again. We'll be back next week with another episode of Great Loop Radio. Until then, safe cruising. Mm -hmm.